Well, hello there, everybody. So a couple of days ago, I decided to ask YouTube if they wanted to give me some questions to answer in a little QA thing. And, uh, yeah, there was quite a response. Had to narrow that down to, like, 17 questions. So that's fun. But I figured do this while my computer's still under repair due to a power supply issue and a good chunk of the Cosmic Wonder data is on there. I managed to save a few things, but not everything yet. It's all on that computer. <laughs> But that's my problem to worry about, so let's put all that aside and get to the Q&A. Let's do this. Do people send you Tumblr posts, or do you slash Andy find them yourself? If so, directly from the source, or from other websites, Twitter, Reddit, etc. So, when I first started doing this, I was actually tracking down the posts myself, like going through my own dashboard and everything like that. But as the, uh, the show got bigger and bigger and bigger, I decided to set up a Discord that actually handles all that for me. So a lot of times you get people submitting their posts, their friends' posts, or anything that's really funny. And it does kind of seem like they're pulling it from multiple sources. Like sometimes people send them from iFunny, some of them send them from like a Twitter post, some of them send it through Reddit. So it's really all over the place, but Discord kind of curates it into one spot. So that being said, if you ever had a post that you wrote that you wanted to submit, join the Discord. But, you know, be sure to follow the rules and, you know, read them before you interact. Pineapple on pizza, yay or nay? Yeah. It's good stuff. Just try it sometimes. Are you gay? Okay, well, actually more like, what is your sexuality? And also, do you support the LGBTQ plus community? You know what, that is a, you know, a something that I don't openly talk about as much, but I mean, I've done posts on it for Pride Month and everything like that. But here is the answer. I am what is considered panromantic demisexual. And what that really means is I have the potential to feel romantic attraction to people of any gender, guy, girl, non-binary, anywhere in between, but really only feel sexual attraction to people with I've had a big emotional bond with. So the easiest way to sort of explain that, to simplify it, love is love. Love is love. Favorite type of music? Not sure if you'd answered this before. I have a couple of favorite types. Usually depends on like mood or setting or whatever. But my, usually my go-tos are Future Funk, J-Rock, Ska, and Vaporwave. Are you an active dreamer? Have you ever lucid dreamed? Yes, lucid dreaming is actually what inspired Cosmic Wonders. And that was a question I got a lot list so figured answer that one with this one the lucid dream i had to make cosmic wonders is i was in an empty space following a glowing white rabbit and as i kept pursuing it and pursuing it universes and planets started to shape around me and then when i finally caught up with the rabbit they all sort of vanished and when i woke up i knew i had to write all of this shit down because there was something here and sort of built the world around it. And that also does answer another question I get. Why is rabbit such a big motif in Cosmic Wonders? Now you know. How many of your OCs are built off of one specific aspect of your own personality? All of them. Literally all of them. <laughs> but if I really had to select one character that was very glaringly a good chunk of my personality traits, that would be Azuri. Most people picked up on this. Azuri is autistic coded and she has a lot of the quirks and traits that I have with mine. With the obvious ones being hand stimulations, uh, very sensitive to loud noises, tendency to mimic gestures that I enjoy, and of course, textures. Soft textures are nice. Is there a possibility that people can guest stars with additional voices in your videos, any of them that need voice acting? It's highly unlikely with Late Night Tumblr. I have done it in the past uh, when my voice was shot and I got a bunch of people to do it for me. But the actual creating process to LNT is literally like, I think not even a full day. Usually the night before the video goes up, I have recorded it and got like all the pieces selected. And then I hand it off to Andy when I'm ready to go to bed. And then usually when I wake up in the morning, Andy has completed it. And then I do QA check, make sure everything's good and then send it up to upload. And in terms of QA, I usually just check for like glitches or if anything is timed wrong. Mispronunciation I leave in as a joke just to see if it gets picked up because most of the time I read it wrong on purpose. Anyway, the point being, 
to wrangle up other actors who can make it in that deadline, I would actually feel like a bastard to say, I need this within like four hours. So I doubt it. If I wanted to maybe do like a special, I could probably plan it ahead of time, but usually with YouTube and how fast videos gotta go out, it's usually Andy and I alone in this. How did you come up with your character designs? P.S. Hope you're doing all right. Oh, thank you, Natty. Uh, character designs, I kind of have it boiled down to three things that I really like doing with characters. Color palettes, body shapes, and personality types. So usually the breakdown will be, okay, do I have a good pastel color palette for this character? Yes. Am I using a body shape that I rarely see that would look really good in this universe? Yes. And finally, is there a personality type that I can use in this series that would blend really well with the environment instead of standing out very, very obnoxiously? Yes? Cool. Let's make it. And that was my biggest worry for Brighton when I added him in because when I designed him, I really thought he was gonna stick out a little too much. But in reality, he, he blends in more than I thought he would. Whether that was just color choices or the fact that, you know, there wasn't an ideal goofball character mixed into the roster, but when I put him in, I just looked at all of them like, wow, this worked out pretty well, cool. Do you attribute most of your success on YouTube in particular to your Tumblr and Florka Cows videos? And if so, do you believe that you put more effort into your other work, such as your music or Coswan, that got disproportionately smaller amount of attention? I would say the Tumblr videos and working with Aphmau back in the day is kind of what gave the channel a big boost in numbers. Florka Cows does great on the channel, mind you, but in comparison to Tumblr videos, it's sort of like half. And yeah, in terms of like the music and Coswan content, it does do a little bit less than the, the Tumblr videos do. And that is mostly just the fault of the algorithm because, you know, when most people subscribe to this channel, it's usually because of the Tumblr videos. So yeah, the algorithm's like, okay, this is the stuff we'll push to those subscribers because this is the video that got them to subscribe in the first place. That usually leaves most people shocked when they find out I do music or the series because the, most of the time, the only way to find out is when I acknowledge it in a Tumblr video. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. I kind of like the idea of my music being more under the radar and Cosmic Wonder is kind of being this series that's just slowly growing and growing through artwork, word of mouth, and yeah. Because I also don't want to be the guy that constantly pushes the series on you in every video. Like, I know that's probably the best way to get people to watch your content, but no offense to any creator, but when I see them do it in the middle of their videos, it feels very jarring. I don't know, but that, that that's just me, and I'd hold no grudge against them for doing it. To me, the music and Cosmic Wonders are more just passion projects I like seeing done because I like expressing myself in those weird, absurd ways. And thanks to just doing the big content stuff in general, it helps me make those projects happen. So, I really can't be mad about it. If you could make a Cosmic Wonders RPG, would you make your own system or adapt a pre-existing system like World of Darkness or Powered by Apocalypse? Ooh, that would be interesting. I'm assuming you mean like a tabletop RPG. Um, not sure on that one, but I do know if I made like a video game RPG, I would actually want to go with the Tales of series battle system. Sort of that uh, linear real-time action sort of uh, combat and then take notes from Symphonia, which Symphonia, certain characters had like signature moves they could do with each other if you did it in the right orders. So that was a thought because I do love those series and I loved that battle system and I wish more games did that one. How long have you been voice acting for? I do believe I've been going on 13 years professionally. It's been a funky ride. I think the the first paid voiceover job I got was for a Newgrounds animation called Warning Labels. I don't remember what I made. I think I basically got a revenue cut from the cartoon on Newgrounds, because uh, you could set it up that way. And yeah, that was... I was like when I was just in college with like this tiny little microphone and a pocket full of dreams. 
I don't know if warning labels actually still exist on Newgrounds, though. I think somebody re-uploaded it on YouTube, but yeah, if you ever wanted to hear what fresh face voiced PM Seymour sounds like, that, that's that's the one to find. It was my favorite color, light blue. It, 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 if it wasn't obvious, may, maybe the entire spectrum of blues. Yeah. How tall is Sion? I know, because I, I fluctuate her height all the time when I was like, you know, still doing beta designs for her. But the official height, set in stone, never gonna change. Five foot two. And for your metric system peeps, I believe that is 157 and a half-ish, I think. I think the exact number is like 157.48. And that is without the shoes that she wears. She actually does wear platform shoes, which add an extra three inches to her height. So with the shoes, she'd be five five. What was it like working with people like Afmao and Aaron? Did you enjoy voice acting for Travis? You know what? It's <laughs> it's weird to say. It's been a long time uh, that I thought about this. I mean, because I, I did come back for like a, a little surprise episode once, but the entire setup for doing it is very different from how we originally recorded it. And I'm not going to you know talk about how the behind the scene things work because that's not my business. I will say voice acting for Travis was a lot of fun. I always think back on like, just because I, when I played Travis, I had no idea how to play Minecraft. So when, you know, recording for it and doing like the, the stream shows where we were playing and doing like, you know, in character stuff. Oh boy, did I stink. <laughs> in terms of recording for the role play, I had a lot of fun with Travis and then also voicing a bunch of other guys like his dad, Brendan, uh, Mr. Gavin, I believe he also showed up in the the little comeback that I did a, like a couple of weeks ago. I'm also gonna take this opportunity because I get this question a lot, even now, even though it's been years since the end of season six. No, I don't know if they're gonna do a season seven. The channel looks like it's having a lot of fun doing what it's doing now and whatever they decide to do in the future, I'm gonna support because they're good people. They work their asses off, but they have fun doing it. So, good on them. Can I get you to say trans rights? It'd be nice to hear from you. I know you're pretty supportive of the LGBT community. Trans rights, yo. Ever visit comic conventions? I did. I uh, was a, I did panels uh, many years ago, like just talking about voice acting basics and stuff like that. I would love to visit them more, but I'm very much a very introverted soul. So it's really hard for me to go to those things and you know, feel comfortable. But if I did get invited, that would be pretty awesome. And I think the only way they can do that is with fan requests. So if there's a convention you want to see me go to, just let them know. And the final question. What do you think you'll do if Tumblr shuts down? You know, I, I thought about this one a lot because I know we've had scares every so often, but then again, so does literally every other social media in existence, even YouTube. I feel like if it ever did shut down, I would focus a lot more on my music and Cosmic Wonders and likely get into animating more and doing a lot of just animated content along with, you know, just probably voicing stuff still for Flork, maybe do some of the Reddit posts that are insane. I, there, there's always possibilities and I feel like no matter what, the views and the subscribers are gonna change if I have to go that route. But Tumblr is just, it's a magical place. And every time that I think it's done and it's gonna go away, somehow it always swings back. Because despite all of the ups and downs that Tumblr has had, some of the weird, bizarre stories we get there, some of the users that end up there, we love it. We love having this weird little goblin of a social media site in our lives. Yes, I do have plans if Tumblr does vanish. You won't see me vanish anytime soon. If it does, I'll just try to keep entertaining in the weird ass ways that I can. Anyway, thank you all for joining me in this q and I might do more of these in the future and just be sure to write down questions that have already been answered so I don't end up repeating them because Apparently I do that with Tumblr posts, but please cut me some slack. I've been reading them for six years. It's hard to keep track of which ones I've done. At least the obscure ones, not the ones that are very obvious like Randy or Sticks. But anyway, thank you all so much. You know, like, kind of, subscribes. See you guys next time. Bye.